The first initial portion that we're going to see here is actually the urinary bladder. And as we continue to move caudally through the pelvic cavity, we encounter this very large bilobed object or structure. That's going to be the prostate gland or the body of the prostate gland. If we open up the prostate gland, we can actually visualize the urethra running through the prostate gland. In this area is where you will find the urethral crest, which is leading from the bladder along the dorsal wall of the prostate. And also this very little mound of tissue here, which is the colliculus seminalis. The colliculus seminalis is where the ductus deferens, as well as some of the ducts of the prostate gland itself, will be emptying their contents into the pelvic part of the urethra. So the pelvic part of the urethra starts at the bladder and continues to move caudally through the pelvic cavity, after which it will empty or will move into the penis itself. So the structure of the penis is going to be this piece right here, which we see is cut in cross-section and would be connecting over here to the ischiatic tuberosity. So here we see one cruce of the penis. The cruce of the penis is made of that thick white connective tissue covering, or the tunica albuginea. And within the tunica albuginea, you have this erectile tissue, this kind of cavernous tissue. That's going to be the corpus cavernosum penis. We also see this muscle that's cut similarly in cross-section that is surrounding the cruce of the penis, and that is going to be the ischiocavernosus muscle. So there's a cruce on each side, the left and then the right sides will have a cruce. Here I'm going to flip the animal over so we can see where this cruce is inserting onto the ischiatic tuberosity. So what we're seeing right here is actually the ischiocavernosus muscle overlying the right cruce. Also in this area is this very small little spindle-shaped muscle just cranial to the ischiocavernosus, and that is going to be the ischiourethralis muscle. Here we can also visualize the area of the bulb of the penis. So the bulb of the penis is covered by bulbospongiosis muscle, this muscle that's cut in cross-section right here. And overlying that right in the middle of the bulbospongiosis is the retractor penis muscle. If we open the bulb of the penis, we can also see some more erectile tissue within the bulb of the penis, and that's going to be corpus spongiosum penis. Corpus spongiosum penis starts to surround the urethra as it enters into the bulb of the penis. One muscle I do want to make you aware of since we're here is this muscle located right here, traveling from the rectum up to the caudal vertebra here, and that is going to be the rectococcygeus muscle, located on the ventral aspect of the tail, and again, attaching down towards the rectum and external anal sphincter. So now we will continue our journey down through the penis. We see here that the penis, which now encases the penile part of the urethra, if we cut this penis in cross-section at this point, we will see two areas of erectile tissue located dorsally, and that is going to be the corpus cavernosum penis. Here we see the urethra that the probe is moving into, and that is going to be surrounded by more erectile tissue, which is the corpus spongiosum penis. Along this way, we can also now visualize the dorsal artery and nerve of the penis running along that dorsal aspect. Now as we move to the most distal portion of the penis, we see this very large or enlarged area here. That's going to be the bulbus glandus. And the most distal portion of the penis is going to be the pars longa glandus. So if you add the pars longa glandus 
to the bulbous glandus, you get the glans penis. The penis in our domestic species is housed within the prepuce, so you have to actually reflect the prepuce in order to see the glans penis. Finally, we will move on to the testicle and spermatic cord. We will start here with the components of the spermatic cord. So here we can see all of those components as they move into the inguinal canal with the ductus deferens, testicular artery and vein, and the genitofemoral nerve would also be going into this area as well. They move into the deep inguinal ring within the abdominal cavity and exit through the superficial inguinal ring on the outside of the abdomen. Again, the contents of the spermatic cord includes the ductus deferens, the testicular artery and vein, and this piece of muscle that we see along the spermatic cord, which is a separate fascicle from the internal abdominal oblique, which is the cremaster muscle. Now all of those components come down into the testicle, and here we see a good representation of where the parietal layer of the vaginal tunic is located. It's located within this deep region that would be surrounding the testicle itself. So if we open up that parietal layer of the vaginal tunic, now we can see the shiny material on the testicle, which is going to be the visceral layer of the vaginal tunic. The space in between the parietal and visceral layers of the vaginal tunic within the scrotum is going to be the vaginal cavity. If we were to look at that same space as we come through the inguinal canal and spermatic cord, it would be the vaginal canal. And again, the parietal layer of the vaginal tunic is a continuation of the parietal peritoneum from the abdomen. And the visceral layer of the vaginal tunic would be a continuation of the visceral peritoneum from the abdominal cavity. Now looking at the testicle itself, we see a couple different components. We see the testicle here. And on the testicle, we see this region, which is the start of the epididymis, aka the head of the epididymis. Sperm are produced in the testicle move into the redes testis and into the ductus epididymitis, which is within the epididymis. The head of the epididymis flows into the body of the epididymis, which finally flows into the tail of the epididymis. The ductus deferens is the emptying duct that will transport spermatozoa from the tail of the epididymis and into the urethra. We also see this structure here, which is a combination of the testicular artery and testicular vein as it wraps around into this network of vasculature known as the pampiniform plexus.